Hello everyone and welcome back to Marine Wisdom. Today we're going to be studying the maneuvering diagram and this is actually very important as it's been asked uh, several times in your class 4 motor written exams and I've actually heard of a case where the surveyor was asking the candidate to draw the maneuvering diagram during the oral. I know that sounds bizarre but that has actually happened. So let's just dive right into it. So in order to understand the diagram, we need to first understand these control valves, which are three by two pneumatically operated spring return control valves. Uh, these valves that you see. So let's first understand the working of these valves. All right, the valve that you see in the picture is called a pneumatically operated spring return three by two valve. So let's dissect this. Pneumatically operated because it uses air signals, spring return because there's a spring over here. This is your spring and three by two because it has three ports and two positions. All right. So the three ports are, this is your inlet. So that's number one. This is your outlet. That's number two. And this is your operating signal port, which is number three. This is your exhaust, but it's not a port because uh, it is not connected to a pipe as such. And this is your spool. So the three ports you've understood, this is number one. Um, number one port, number two port, and number three port. So three ports and two positions because there are two positions the spool can take. So the first position is depending on the operating signal. So the operating signal, the operating air signal comes from here. It comes from here and it pushes the spool towards the right. So this is the first position of your spool that you see in the picture. The second position is when the operating signal is not provided and the spool is towards the left. So the spool, depending on the operating signal being there or not, can be towards the left or the right. So two positions of the spool and three ports. That's why it's called a three by two uh, direction control valve. So now just um, understanding the line diagram. So the same thing that you saw in the picture uh, looks like this on a line diagram. So, um, the three ports here are, uh, one second. Yeah. This is number one. That's your number two, which is your outlet. This is number three. That is your inlet. And this is your exhaust, which is not counted as a port because there's no pipe connected to it as seen in the previous picture that I was showing you. So yeah, two positions, square number one, this is one position, square number two, that's the second position. All right. So how this operates is uh, the operating signal comes from the top as shown um, in condition one. And when it is off, the air is continuously being vented. So air from the outlet goes to the exhaust, to the atmosphere. So air is being vented, all right? And in condition two, uh, how the valve is operated. So the operating air signal, it comes from the top here. And what happens is air to process, that is from your inlet, it goes to your outlet. So that's how it's done. And earlier it was just being vented from the outlet to the exhaust. So that is the second position. So there are two positions, either it can be vented or it disconnects from the inlet to the exhaust. Now that we've learned the working of our three by two direction control valves, we can go ahead and start with our maneuvering diagram. So let's first look at the main parts of this. So there's an air receiver over here, which is basically your air bottle. There's an isolating valve over here. 
this is your isolating valve which is usually kept open for one of the bottles whichever one is in use uh, we have air starting valve which is one per cylinder which is basically mounted on your cylinder we have a pilot valve which is also one per cylinder so depending on the number of cylinders if we have eight cylinders we'll have eight pilot valves and we'll, we'll have eight air starting valves we have a turning gear here and a fuel pump connected to the fuel rack and the governor so the governor uh, regulates the fuel rack and the fuel rack thus regulates the fuel pump all right let's start off so suppose a ship is at port and uh, you're ready for departure everything is done uh, turning gear is uh, disengaged and just the start signal hasn't been given so you're obviously your isolating valve that is this valve for the air receiver is always open so that is open but your start signal is not being given but you're ready for departure so turning gear is also disengaged so what happens then so your air goes and waits add a few places and i'll just name those places it goes and waits here so it's waiting at the automatic valve 4 it's waiting at valve 2 and as your turning gear is disengaged it can also go from here from here from here all the way till your number one control valve and yeah it can go from the turning gear interlock only because the turning gear is engaged uh, sorry disengaged so uh, as it's disengaged it's pushed to the position two of the valve so the air is connected from the inlet to the outlet yeah so the air is waiting at how many places at your four at number two control valve at number one control valve all right so we know the air is waiting at valve 4, valve 2, and valve 1. And moving on. So now we are starting the engine. And we can provide the start signal from, uh, I mean, from the bridge or the ECR, which is remotely or locally from the maneuvering platform. That is the local hand start signal over here. So this is locally and this is remotely. So let's just assume we are doing it. Uh, locally so we do it locally we press this button so what what that does is uh, switches the dcv to this position so the it connects the inlet connects to the outlet so air goes from here to number one and operating it acts as an operating signal for our number one direction control valve and now the air that was waiting over here at one that is connected to the inlet i mean inlet connects to the outlet here so air moves forward and it goes to number two and this air signal then activates a number two direction control valve so the air that was waiting so it acts as an operating signal over here and the air that was waiting over here is uh, now goes forward as inlet connects to the outlet and it goes and waits at a few places so it waits over here and now it can also go here it, it is going over here and what it does is is basically asking the governor to pull the fuel racks to zero as we do not want any fuel to be admitted when the uh, engine is being started on air so what it does is it basically pulls the fuel rack to zero position and air also has a path to go over here it operates number three valve so inlet outlet is connected for number three and this air signal operates number four so the air that was waiting at four 
inlet outlet connect so it goes forward and it waits where it waits at our main air starting valve of our cylinder all right so air is waiting over here at a pilot valve air is waiting over here at our air starting valve now depending on the cam position uh and this usually happens right after i mean uh the piston uh, just beyond the tdc for that unit so as the piston goes below the tdc uh our cam peak pushes our spindle so air connects and it goes from the pilot valve to the top of the piston of our air starting valve it pushes the piston down it compresses the spring so this valve is opened and the air that was previously waiting at the air, start, uh, air starting valve has now a way to go down into the cylinder inside the engine. And now as that is happening, we know of uh, starting air valve overlap, which is important and it is usually 15 degrees. So as that, this is happening, the starting air valve of the next cylinder in the firing order is being opened. And all the valves, you know, number one, number two, number three, number four are now being vented out to the exhaust or to the atmosphere. All right. So these are being vented out. And uh, then similarly, the, these set of valves for the next cylinder are being opened. Uh, the pilot valve for the next cylinder is uh, basically being uh, operated. And our air starting valve is being opened for the all the uh, consequent cylinders according to the firing order with some valve overlap. Now this happens and this continues till our firing RPM is, re is uh, reached. And when that happens, this air signal, uh, this one that was pulling back our fuel racks is let gone off. So this comes back to its venting position and our engine uh, is started. That's how it, our engine is started. So this was our maneuvering diagram and our emergency stop is basically independent of our governor. So you see this line bypasses the governor. So what happens there is this emergency stop, if I push it over here, uh, it activates this valve and then air basically goes Oh, one second, let me just erase. It's just gotten messy. Yeah. So when I activate the emergency stop, our air basically goes from here, here, and it directly pulls the fuel rack to zero. So it bypass, uh, bypasses the governor and it basically brings the fuel rack to zero position of all the fuel pumps. And that's how our, our engine is started. I hope you guys found this useful and there are so many more such videos on marine wisdom, things explained in a simple way. There are question answer sessions, uh, there are live classes and there's so much on the app as well. So if you guys want to enroll, please leave a comment below or please reach uh, out to us on Instagram and we will help you with the enrollment procedure. Thank you and all the best, fair winds and following seas.